Hi, and welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and thanks for watching. While the big statewide races are getting hot and heavy as we end the summer months, you would think that these races would begin after Labor Day. Uh-uh. They have been underway for many months. We're going to talk about them after these words. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host. Hi, welcome back to uh, Pennsylvania Newsmakers. Terry Madonna here for the program. Well, uh, the U.S. Senate race in particular in Pennsylvania is not only a big national story, but polls released within the last three weeks show the race tightening for a variety of reasons. To assess that race and other issues in the state, we have three of our regular contributors, uh, uh, journalists all, experienced journalists all, they'll smile at that. Uh, Brad Bumstead joins me from the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. As often is the case, Tony Romeo from KYW and KDKA, and Pete DeCourcy from CapitalWire.com. Gentlemen, welcome. All right, let's get into this. Uh, uh, right away, Peter, let me start with you. Three polls, three straight weeks, the Senate race, Four, five, six percentage points. Pick a number. Why has this race gotten closer? Because you have a two-term incumbent who's finally, finally, with three months left in the election, two months left in the election, pardon me, has rallied his base. Terry, there are 45 percent of the people in Pennsylvania who will vote for any Republican who spends <laughs> a little money and does a decent job right. and doesn't trip on his own feet. So here's now let me ask So what question. what we've learned is that Santorum can finally get to that point. But here's the problem. Well, he's still you have, not quite at 45, you, but go ahead. But he's within 5 okay. 6 All points. Right. It, here's the problem Santorum has. He's been in office for 12 years. Now this is his 12th year as a US senator. Bob Casey has yet to ha put one ad on the air, although there are a couple of liberal groups have put on some ads attacking Santorum. We haven't seen one Casey ad right. attacking where Santorum's kids went to school, which right. is going to be an issue. We haven't seen one Casey ad about the book. Casey, Santorum running in a virtual vacuum on commercial television after two months is still six points behind yep. a guy who nobody well, stands on. Br nobody Brad, knows where he stands. I, my, my That's not good. My judgment about this, and you know, with full disclosure, having produced the Keystone Poll this week, which I, shows that. Santorum is not moving ahead so much as Casey's coming down. Right, and I think that you know one of the reasons, of course, is Green Party nominee uh, yeah. Carl Romanelli. Uh, he garners four percent in your poll. Some of that, certainly, arguably, the majority of it is coming mm -hmm. uh, uh, from Casey, and that's certainly helping. But look, I don't think the the fundamentals in this race have really changed. You still have an incumbent who's in trouble. Uh, the most important issue nationally, according to voters in your poll, is the war in Iraq. Right. That hurts Santorum. Bush's unpopularity hurts Santorum. That's still a problem. And I agree with Pete that once Casey really starts to, to hit Santorum in some of the ads, it's, it's yeah, going to change. Tell me, when the poll, which I know you've analyzed, uh, the, the, the Keystone poll again, what we have is this problem that Santorum has in part because of the unpopularity of President Bush, who's, you know, almost half the voters say that the president's unpopularity is a problem and that the senator is too close to the president. Now, I know you do a lot of work in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, two areas where the president is not as popular as he is, let's say, in the mid-state region. How much of a factor do you think that is really playing in this race? Well, I think it's a major factor, and I think that also portends that uh, the race may turn on national events right. that will unfold over the next couple of months. Interestingly enough, it doesn't seem, uh, you're the pollster, it doesn't seem like the uh, British thwarting yeah. of that uh, airline plot has had uh, a great deal of effect on these issues in polls, which might seem to suggest that the national security issue isn't going to yeah. play as well for Republicans like Bush and Santorum. Yeah, but, but in the state, there isn't any doubt that, that Santorum does better on the national security issues. Uh, Casey does better on Iraq, and it is possible that national events can still play a role, but that's not Santorum's point. He's trying to remind people now, you've been out on this stump with him. What's he saying to voters when he goes and meets them person to person? He, what he's saying is that I'm a good guy who's worked hard for you. He's basically, and he's doing the national security. Right. He's trying to campaign like Arlen Specter. Here are the following right. 40. He goes around and hands out a little booklet that says, 
I forget the number, it's either 50 or 100 things you don't know about Rick Santorum, and it's all specter type stuff. I right. co-sponsored with Senator Ted Kennedy the Improved minimum Education wage, Act, or, I, wage, or yeah. I worked on the minimum wage. I co-sponsored. It's, it's literally, if you, no matter who you are, you can find 10 things in this little book that, that you like, probably 10 things you don't like. But <laughs> it's, all, it's, like, it's almost like the softer side of Rick. Right. Just like that new ad he has, which, as near as I can tell, is telling Pennsylvanians that he really likes his family, which, by the yeah. way, I can vouch for. I've we seen him with his a, family. They like each other. Yeah, we just have a few seconds. The soft commercial, and, and you've seen it, uh, you know, with uh, particularly the one where he's waltzing on some, or he's interfering in some Karen. polka, and some woman says, oh, oh Senator, get, get, well, who knows? What do I know about that stuff? Get off the dance floor. I mean, is that important for him to soften his image? Well, I think so. I think he's been pummeled uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, and, and he's pummeled and, a few people. He's pummeled a few people, <laughs> but I think in particular he has been obviously targeted as the guy that uh, the Democrats want to take down. Yep. All right, when we come back, we're going to continue with our discussion with a group of experienced, these aren't old elderly types, these are experienced journalists when we come back. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Pennsylvania Medical Society. Doctors and patients preserve the relationship. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to PA Newsmakers for our extended discussion of the U.S. Senate race, among other important statewide races. We have the governor's race to chat about with Brad Bumstead, Pete DeCourcy, and Tony Romeo, a veteran a journalist. All. all right, Brad, let, I want to go to this important point. Throughout the campaign, Santorum has criticized his opponent, Casey, for not willing, first of all, to debate. They've, they've kind of resolved that with four scheduled debates, not being specific about the issues, for in a sense what he would call ducking, that ducking, hiding. What's your sense about the degree to which that's relevant in this race? It's relevant because I'm not sure the Pennsylvania voters really know all that much about Bob Casey. Now, that sounds crazy given that he is a yep. statewide elected official treasurer and that he ran for governor. But unlike Santorum, who has a 12-year record of votes that can be compiled, you know, on each and every issue where he stands, we really don't know that much about Casey except his dad was a former uh, uh, right. governor and, you know, very popular uh, for that reason. It's a great political name. Uh, uh, so so there, there is a gap there. But I think that TV advertising mm -hmm. is what's going to try to fill that where Casey's going to say, here's who I am. All right, Tony, look. The, the, ad, the ads are important, but there's still a large number of voters who say in the latest Keystone poll that they're likely to change their mind or could change their mind. Is, in the final days, does this campaign get wider, do you think, or closer? Well, I think the unknown factor is what happens when Casey gets on right. television statewide. Yeah. Uh, I have to wonder why he's waited so long. Uh, I know he doesn't have as much money as Rick Santorum, but Santorum has been on the air for so long. And your own poll, the last one you did before the one that came out this week, showed the race was tightening up mm -hmm. from those huge leads that he had. Uh, and, and so I, I it sort of questioned the strategy of waiting so long to get on, to tele yeah. on television. But now that he is getting on TV, I believe his, his statewide ads are rolling out now. Uh, that we'll see if, if, if in fact, the, the gap widens again. All right, let's go to the money. You know as well as everyone else that it's tough to raise money in these, pre in these races, federal uh, races, because of, of the limits. I was sort of shocked to read the Democratic senatorial campaign contributions. They had a big list of them this week, and Casey had only received, I, 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 I know I'm not going to get this right, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 180000 Compared to three and four hundred thousand dollars given in other races, what does that tell you? I don't think it tells you anything. I think when if Casey needs that money, I think it tells you that they think Casey's in good shape, and they're they're yeah. trying to win back the majority. And right now they got Casey, who's six points ahead, having been outspent, having been attacked all summer in the free media. But I mean, the, the fall is about two simple things for Casey. He has established himself as a likable figure. What he has to do is fill in the gaps and let people have some right. comfort level about what he would do as a U.S. Let senator. Let me stop now. And not have Santorum fill in the gaps. But the same thing is for Santorum. Everybody knows yeah. what Santorum will do. Santorum's policies are probably the best known of anybody in the state <laughs> except Ed Rendell's. And maybe in the country, in the Senate. Maybe in the country. <laughs> but what he has to do is he has yeah. to tell people, I'm a likable guy who cares about you. Because right now, what poll after poll is showing us is that right. people... 
is that swing voters, particularly women voters in the key suburbs around Allegheny County, in Allegheny County and in Montgomery and Bucks around Philadelphia, okay. are not buying that he's right. a good guy Let, and he cares about them. Let's talk about these ads a minute. You, you have, you've done some reporting about the ads. and, and First of all, tell us about them and then talk a little bit about what you think their effects might be. Well, the uh, Pittsburgh trip compiled some figures just on the total amount of spending on ads in the U.S. Senate race uh, in the Pittsburgh TV market just this summer, July mm -hmm. and, and August uh, uh, through this week. And Santorum had spent about 600000 compared to 200000 some for, for Casey. So that's a three-to-one difference. Right. I mean, it's no wonder that, that Santorum is closing the gap. And... Uh, uh, but I think that uh, Santorum, through these ads, is softening his image right. a good bit. The Polk ad you talked about. Um, curiously, though, your poll showed that uh, Santorum's negatives had gone up as a result of this advertising. Mm -hmm. Some unpopularity with his own. But what's curious about that is I don't think Santorum has run negative right. ads. They've been 527 committees. Is that yep, right? Yep, that's right. correct. But still, that's rubbed off somehow yeah. on Santorum. Yep. All right, we're going to go to break, and we're going to come back and talk a little bit about the governor's race. But, but in consensus, you, do you guys think this race is going to end up being sort of a, we're going to have a wild and woolly, very expensive finish, down to the wire, even though the national environment favors the Democrats and that their voters are a little more enthusiastic? Do you agree with that assessment? Yes, Rick Santorum's the best politician we've had in the last 20 years in this state. I think every uh, pundit uh, has said all along not to underestimate Rick Santorum. Yep. You agree Tight as a drum. All right, there you have it. All right, we come back. Uh, Governor Rendell still maintains his big lead over Lynn Swan, uh, 19 points in the Keystone poll, 19 or 18 or 19 points in the uh, Quinnipiac poll, and in the Muhlenberg poll. We got all the polls out there. Uh, we're going to talk about the governor's race uh, after we pay some bills. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education, 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania and by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Welcome back to Pennsylvania Newsmakers. We're talking about these important statewide races that turn to the governor's race. Uh, Governor Riddell continues to hold this big lead. Tony Romeo, let's start with you. Three straight polls, three sta straight big double-digit leads. Uh, g give us your thumbnail a sketch of what's going on in the governor's race, other than the governor in Dell has a big lead. Well, I hate to parrot the words of the host back at him, but <laughs> we were talking about your poll yesterday, and you were the one, I think, who observed that, that Lynn Swan has yet to find any issues or issue that resonates with voters that he can pin on Ed Rendell and gain traction in this race. And uh, he also hasn't been on television. He's still not on television statewide. I think his first ads of any kind went on here Monday, and they were only playing, at least for the first couple of days this week, out in the West. Mm -hmm. So you combine those two factors, and I think it's been deadly for him. Yeah, Peter, do, do you think that it's essentially that whether... You know, Swan and the Republicans want to admit it. Rendell has done a good bit of what he said he would do. The state's in pretty good fiscal shape, more than good, with an $800 million. Do you think the fundamental problem, as Tony put it, is that there just isn't huge issues out there for him, for Swan to grab a hold of? That's not what polls are showing that, that I've seen from both sides of this, this campaign. Property tax is still a big mm -hmm. issue. Taxes are a big issue. Spending's a big issue. I, mean, I think their issues are what we're going to find out in the next five weeks, between now and either mid-September or October 1st, as the Swan, the Swan campaign has decided to throw the long ball. Yeah. Over the next What's month, the long ball? they're going to spend all $5 million they got or $4 million they got. They're going to run out major ads going after but Rendell on property issue. taxes. Oh, it's going to be you property, think it's taxes property taxes and taxes and spending. Yeah. They're going to, why do you think Ed Rendell keeps... So there's a constitutional requirement, Terry, in Pennsylvania that we have a balanced budget. I understand. Why has Ed Rendell been running ads for two months saying he balanced the budget? Well, because he's getting ready. He knows it's coming. He's been inoculating okay. himself for two months. All right, let's go. There's Millions of dollars of inoculation. You want to respond to that with another question? I can. Well, I think that the, that the other uh, 
thing that Swan has out there for him is the pay raise. Right? I was They'll just going to ask it. you about that. And I think that's a uh, uh, ace in the hole here that he can play in his TV advertising. But I think, you know, uh, Swan's campaign says a 19-point lead. Anybody who believes that's hallucinating. Well, I mean, I think that's where straight, it is. But there are three straight polls done independently uh, of the campaign. I'm just giving you their point of view. Okay. I think that... that uh, that is, you know, where it's at right now, based on these polls. That's accurate, but I think that's illusory because Swan really hasn't advertised. Okay, if he does five million dollars so, worth, but then we'll the see. problem is, Go the ahead. problem is, he's going to spend all of his money by late September or early October, and unless he adds click, then, we'll be then up in those money. polls, and he's out of money, and he's yeah. done. Well, and because right, he's, got, he's going to have to raise another five or six million dollars right. to stay on the air. And that's why Matt has had Red Eyes a massive exactly. head start, both in terms of the length of time he's been on the air already, and the money he has in his war chest to answer any ads. All right, but let me go to one other point. Right. What does Swan Tony, do? But Tony makes a really good point, because Randell has had the field to himself. Swan will never have the field to himself. Yeah. The moment Swan has an ad saying X, Neil Oxman, Rendell's guy will have an ad saying, saying why. X All right. is wrong. But what does he do fundamentally, that is, Swan, about this huge lead that Rendell holds in the Philadelphia media market, which includes Republican Chester County and the, you know, more or less Republican Lehigh Valley area? What does he do when he's losing 60 percent where 40 percent of the voters do? Can he, he had... Am I, does he have to change it in there, or can he win somewhere else? Well, I, you know, that, that's a very good question. I mean, the, 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 the uh, conventional wisdom is that he, he cannot yeah. win unless he makes some inroads in the Philadelphia He's, he's got to do better. Like, that seems almost like a quixotic quest. You agree with that? Oh, absolutely, I do. I mean, that, those fundamentals on the board, you know, having nothing to do with what the candidates say or what they put in their ads, that is the, the real problem for Swan. It's breaking into the, the All right, Southeast. Go ahead. But keep in mind that the West and the Center... Pay raise ground zero. Uh, we well, agree. Okay. Brad, Brad Colum, they he could hit Renda. He could make big inroads yeah. into where Renda yeah, was in the rest yeah, of the center. That, that, that's my that's point. That's the key. My point is that he's got to he's got to pick up a few points in the east. Okay, we're he's running out of much time. Better. You get the last word. The conventional wisdom is that he has to make inroads in the southeast, but his best strategy may be to try to play to his base in the center in areas where the pay raise and, and tip All right, we're looking up the numbers. Yeah. All right, we're looking at these big statewide races. More on that after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Health Care Association, the future of long-term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Builders Association, building today for a better tomorrow. And by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. All right, welcome back to PA Newsmakers. We're talking about the governor's race. Brad, I want to turn to you. Now, look, everybody's a reformer right now, given the pay hike and the reverberation from the pay hike. Governor Rendell and Lynn Swan are battling it out on issues that don't even concern the executive branch. Reduce the size of the legislature, term limits. Is Governor Rendell a convincing reform candidate? No, he's not, and it's very transparent. I mean, here's a governor who signed the pay raise for three and a half years of his term, didn't propose reform measures. But, look, Terry, this is really smart politics yeah. on Rendell's part. It undercuts Lynn Swan, who's been running around a bus dubbed Reform One. Right. It really undercuts him. It muddies the waters. You know, there's not, they're not going to pass term limits. It takes constitutional amendment anyway, but it, it positions Rendell for the debates and other things this fall to say, hey, I've got a piece of this, too. You agree with that? I do. I think that uh, those particular issues you cited are the kinds of things he can latch on to to sort of divert attention away from right. the fact that some would say he, he was, in, he was involved in the thing that was the catalyst right. for the... Uh, a little the more than involved, up to his neck in it, right? <laughs> yes. And he's admitted that. All right, Peter, look. In order to make the issue that he's a reformer, Lynn Swan has to be convincing, and for the longest time, I think there'd be a consensus that he wasn't very convincing, and now he's got the reform bus, he's talking more about that side well, of the let agenda. Let me tell you what ha ahead. what'll happen. The first time that Stuart Stevens, Lynn Swan's guy, puts up a good ad on reform, and the Rendell people see a few points slipping away, Neil Oxman, Rendell's guy, will hit back with an ad saying, where are your tax returns, Mr. Swan? Uh -huh. The fact is that... And you know what the Swan team's defense is? Rendell didn't put his out in 2002 till late. Mm -hmm. If you're citing Ed Rendell as your reform moral guide, right. you aren't. 
I mean, there's a lot of things but, Ed so Rendell does well, saying, but on. Ed Rendell is not a procedural reformer. Okay, Here, here's a very specific question, and I'm going to ask it of all of you. Up to this point, you all agree that as a reformer, it's a way for Swan to get back into the race. Do we agree? Yes. As, as a ref is he convincing at the moment as a reformer? He's getting better. He's getting better. I He's getting better, but I, again, I think it gets back to the idea that we just haven't seen much of him in what has become the main conduit for getting your message to the voters, and that is in television. Okay, he, he's, he's somewhat convincing, but Terry, he's too timid on this. What he needs to do, if he, he's 19 points behind, he really has to hammer it, he really has to go after it, and he hasn't been willing to do that yet. If he does, he can make some headway. And he's got to release go his ahead. taxes. Go ahead. You think he, we got, is that a huge issue, releasing Yeah, because, because it gives the Rendell people something to say and say, here's a guy who won't release his taxes, but he says he's going to do all these wonderful things. Why isn't he doing them now? Mm -hmm. but, but in terms of the money, does that not tell you something that he's been unable to raise? Now, in this situation, he's not limited. You, you know, Tony Romeo could give $5 million, you know, get the point. Anybody could give any amount of money to these races for governor, and Swan has been having some trouble raising money. Is, is this getting any better for him? Well, I don't, I don't know. We won't see the next report till next month. But I think that if he gets these ads going, really cuts it loose, that can generate more money. I mean, it's a mm -hmm. cyclical kind yeah. of thing. Well, and, and I would exactly. say that that's one of the, the downsides of of uh, not being able to get on television and cut maybe to, into his, right. the governor's lead somewhat uh, might have shaken the money trees loose a little bit earlier. All right, we're going to we're just about out of time. I'm going to ask you pretty much you guys the same question we did in the Santorum Casey race, and I'll start with you, Peter. Do you think this race gets closer? I do. It, it's going to get closer. I do. I, I think this is going to end up still being a four to six point race yeah. um, at. And, and it could get closer than that. You think it's going to get closer? I think it gets closer, but I don't think it gets that close. Um, I agree with Pete. I think it gets closer, has the potential to be real close. All right, so you're all in agreement this race is going to get closer, and the TV commercials that Swan puts out, if he can find a message that resonates with voters, is what this is all about. You yeah. all agree about yeah. that? We'll know in the next month. We'll know in the next month. Well, th that and a good piece of luck that, that he can't even calculate what it all is All right, yet. Brad uh, uh, gets the last word. Uh, we're going to have you guys back. Uh, we'll do this in the middle of September. We got to get a, you know, we're going to get a better sense about where this. But we're all in agreement. Both these races are going to tighten. We've got substantial amount of activity that's going to go into the time. We'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers.